Friggin' what up, dude? Um, Strider Wilson, I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Nice. History is Friggin' what up, dude? Fired up for another freaking dank ep of freaking history is dank, dude. We're rolling in high and tight, dude. And if you're watching on YouTube, you already know, dude. If you read the title, you already know because we got my bro <laughs> from back back in the day, dude. Grew up together, f- coming up through like Groundlings and comedy oh, in LA, dude. Shit. David Leo Schultz, the Beast. Welcome to History is Dank, dude. Thanks oh, for being here. it's very dank to be here, dude. I freaking love that, dude. <laughs> dude, we had a, we had a maneuver, brothers, overturned big rig on the five, dude. And so, literally, we haven't seen each other in a minute. I would say a couple years. Couple of years, yeah. Maybe the, one of the last movies we did together. Or something. Y- yes. Yeah. And David is an excellent uh, actor director performer and just all around beast father friend oh dude. thank you um so we truly didn't get to catch up in the parking lot we literally <laughs> ran in and we're like we're doing this dude so like you everything yeah. you're hearing is just straight up dude this is real catch up yeah this is real yeah, catch yeah, up yeah, baby yeah, yeah. this ain't no hind shit you don't uh, know what's in that this dude. isn't you, cats up exactly <laughs> exactly dude what's good bro dude oh my gosh well first of all i've become it's weird when you go from like friend to fan like, oh, so dude. I'm friends with you, and then I'm watching the shit that you're rolling out, listening to the pod, and then watching some of the stand-up clips, because we know each other from sketch and improv. Mm-hmm. And so I'm watching you, and I knew you did it, but I hadn't really watched your shit yet. And I'm fucking watching you, and I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I <laughs> you were all, I already wanted to cast you because you were one of the funniest dudes I know, but now it's like, oh, dude, you're going to fucking go to the top. Thank you, You're man. so fucking funny. Thank you. Well, I appreciate yeah. it. And, you know, having your endorsement, being a hilarious guy, <laughs> dude, is, uh, it means a lot. I mean, look. Uh, I'm a nobody, the, but the, I'm a fan for sure. No, dude, no, that's untrue. You've done some great movies, um, Ragamuffin. You did, uh, what, what else have you done? What are you working on recently, real quick? Well, man, we get into it? I, well, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, out of the angst of being a struggling actor, I broke in, and my first movie, I, I lucked out. I had the late, great Burt Reynolds. Awesome, dude. And Chevy Chase, and we had, like, Michael Madsen in there, Vinnie Jones, and... Beasts. Uh, but I, I didn't... I, <laughs> I didn't know how to write a movie, so I wrote a sketch movie, mm-hmm. and then the director kind of came in, and, and he's like, let's put a real story to this. Well, I didn't, we didn't know what we were doing, yeah. and it turns out he pretended like he did, but he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> dude. Welcome so, to Hollywood, dude. It was, uh, it was a good freshman year in Hollywood, that's for sure. Dude, that's amazing. Dude, so Vinny Jones, he's the guy, if, if, if you're watching, he's from like, uh, is he Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking yeah, Barrels? He's yeah. like, mm-hmm. your gun says rip the car on the side. <laughs> dude, I played, so I valeted his car. Oh, Oh, yeah. And then I got to play golf with Vinnie Jones. Oh. And him on the golf course is exactly how you'd imagine it was, dude. I came out and I was like, yeah, dude, I think I'm like a, probably a 20 handicap. <laughs> dude, I fucking birdied the first hole by some miracle. <laughs> then the next hole, I hit the pin on my second shot. And he comes up and he goes, fucking 20 handicap, huh? <laughs> Dude, it was amazing. And he's like just breaking my balls, dude. He was so funny. He's like, if you chip this in out of the sand, I'll give you $100 out of my wallet now. Dude, amazing, well, okay, here's dude. a funny story about him. So I didn't know who he was because I'm not a big, I'm like, hey, go sports. Like, yeah. I'm not a big sports guy. Yeah. And uh, I wish I was because I always feel left out, you know. Hey, yeah, baby, I'll, like, go to the late. sports bars with my buddies and like, Jaeger shot, Jaeger shot, high five, high five, heterosexual butt slap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> You're like, guys, uh, I'm just here to talk. And I'm chill. like, you can do, you can touch my ass. So <laughs> I, I don't know what we're rooting for. but <laughs> So. But anyway, so I didn't know what he was famous for. I mean, I had seen some of his movies, you know, but uh, it, but anyway, so I guess one of the things you probably know, he was famous for, like, kicking people in the balls uh-huh. and shit like that. Former uh, football player. So we were doing, uh, you know, stuff for the uh, EPK, and, and somebody whispers in his ear because maybe they thought I would know or something. So we're doing, like, press shots or whatever, and he hits me in the balls. What? And I didn't know... <laughs> I wasn't in on the joke, right? So I go down and I'm like, what the fuck? And, you know, because of the shit in my background or whatever, like I go to a 10 anger. Yeah. And like not in front of him, but like 
I, I just went blind with anger of like, yeah. what? what well, someone I just hit you in the balls. I, I literally like, out of my mouth went, I don't care who the fuck you are. Yeah. Let's go. Even if I get murdered. That's the stupid shit, right? Yeah, but you got hit in the dick. I mean, if there's time. Went without seeing it coming. And then it was like, haha, remember? Remember? And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in on this. Yeah. My nuts hurt bad. Yeah, I was like, what did I do to you? <laughs> So what'd you do? What'd you do? Did you just, you had to enter? Oh, I just had, they, they were like, no, 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 no. And, I, and they were like, it was a joke. It, he didn't mean to. I was like, okay. Dude, isn't that the best thing in the world when a guy's like being outrageous and everyone's like, no, no, dude, he's like, it's cool though. And it's like, dude, you literally just got punched in the dick and it's like, yeah. look, that's just Chris. That's Vinny. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. a guy's thing is like, I like to fart in people's mouths. It's what I do yeah. when I meet them. It's cool. High five, toxic masculinity. Dude, dude, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, dude. Yeah. yeah. Dude, it's unreal. Bro, so. We're going to talk a little bit about your past today because it's yeah. going to inform our historical subject. Awesome. Which is going to be like evangelicalism. Am I saying yeah. that right? And evangelical. And I looked this up a little bit. Dude, it's confusing. What up, dude? This episode is brought to you by Haver Supply, dude. And I'm absolutely fired up right now to talk about Haver Supply, dude. My boy Brad's, dude, pumping out epic lids, dude. Small batch, dude. Bespoke, legit, dude. Inspired by outdoor living lids dude i'm posting up in the og patch all the time dude i just paintballed in that hat dude flipped it backwards dude and was extra careful not to get paint on it dude was taking out my boys dude chad and jt dude had no shot against me out there on the speedball course dude fired up in that throwback lid dude it's vintage apparel and you know i'm a history dude dude so for listeners you get 20 percent off your order with code dank at checkout go to haversupply.com and enter code dank at checkout for 20 percent off that's haversupply.com code dank for 20 percent off at checkout <laughs> Treat yourself, dude. I mean, is it, Bro, is it not confusing? I have gr so you know the the expression I like to use, and it's not mine. It's I've heard it from others. Is is the faith you inherited, right, dude? Totally, right? bro. Totally, and I bro. really like that because, especially, I think for like new generations of people, what you know, for us to become more compassionate and build bridges to each other is understand that I didn't choose this. Yeah. You didn't choose this. We didn't choose this, but this was like, you know, it's like getting taught like, Hey, the grass is green. And by the way, we believe this guy died and like got out of the grave one time. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> it's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> dude. It, it's sort of like the lottery of like, what probably what's the percentage of someone inheriting the religion of their parents? Like, dude, I was raised Catholic. I'm by no means someone who's like, if you believe in God, you're dumb, or like whatever. Like, dude, like that's so bold, isn't that? To be, but it's you know what? Like, stance. like, he, like here's where I'm at. I mean, I'll, I'll just work it backwards, yeah. right? And so, but to to piggyback on what you're saying, I'm just as confused, right? Right? Like, like of my own religion that I was raised in, I'll I'll have to Google at times and go like, where the fuck did this shit come from, bro? Totally, right? So I have compassion for people both on the inside and the outside, wherever your faith is. And so, or isn't, you know, like, so for example, like I, I fucking tell Christians all the time, I'm like, man, two of the most compassionate Christians I know based on what I know about the faith is Dak Shepard and Ricky Gervais yeah, and dude. they're atheists. Right? right. But when I listen to Dax, I have a huge fan of his, same his podcast. Uh, uh, I don't know if you're allowed to talk about other podcasts. No, totally, on podcast. And just his performance on Punked. Uh, I mean, bro, that bro was I mean, we, we were all of that age where he was a little higher than us. So we were like, who the fuck is this yeah, guy? I wanted to be Dax. Dude. Oh, I was like, this dude. He's doing sketch in public. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Our minds were blown. Um, so and I, w w I used to work at Hamburger Hamlet back in Van, Van Oh, dude, Dyes, no way. And I would him and Tom Arnold. I don't know what the relationship was there, but they came in and I waited on him a few times. He's the fucking coolest, nicest guy ever. But when his podcast came out, you know, I, I just was so in awe of how many people he's helping. And, and you know, he, he's an avid atheist. And so, but one of the things that's cool is that he talks about like, you know, like, hey, I don't believe in this whole God thing, but going through AA, I'll see that there's magic behind this, mm -hmm. whatever that magic is. And the way I look at it is like this, is like, imagine, you know, go back a half a, uh, half a billion years ago mm -hmm. when, when we just came from the Neanderthals, right? Yeah. And we're all looking at the sun and we're like, what the fuck is this? Well, you got these Neanderthals over here, these first homo sapiens over here, and we're all looking at the same thing going like, I call that uh, the bleeble blobble. Yes. I call that the sun. Mm -hmm. I call that. And that's what I think that religion is. Religion comes from the word religio, which is to re 
line, uh, material and spirit, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the idea of like, hey, we don't know what is beyond us, but we're trying to uh, re-ligament or realign what's going on. Mm -hmm. Basically, in layman's terms, we're all fucking guessing. Dude, exactly. (laughs) Bro, and we're trying to get through life and be the best we can. And and I care about that bridge to the atheist and the agnostic into the Muslim, into the Jew, into the Christian, and the person that just doesn't give a fuck about any of it. Exactly. That's what I think is would be the most helpful thing. In, in, and I believe in the evolutionary consciousness, right? You know, in, in, in not just for religious folks, but our culture, right? And I go, I care more about us connecting on what we do agree on. And mostly yeah. at the higher levels of all the religions, what I have noticed anyway. And... Um, and philosophies, it goes beyond religion, right? Like, uh, you know, with Buddhism, with, 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 with uh, Eastern practices, all of it. And, you know, we're just down to like really fucking just a good Samaritan, you yeah. know, like a good atheist. We all come to the same place of love and compassion. And so it's like, I don't really care what your fucking map is. Yeah, dude, <laughs> that, that, I, mean? I like that, dude. And yeah. I think like, especially like in... Um, evangelicalism and stuff we've seen like in my limited research that I've done is like it's probably like we're going to focus on like the 1800s or whatever like I guess yeah. the very first split mm-hmm. was Protestantism and with Martin Luther 1500s and it's right. like mm-hmm. just the split of saying look it's this path like this main river would be like what Christianity Catholicism mainstream yeah. or, or like yeah. Greek Orthodox or something but then you have these like in a, based on this article I read of like little streams that go yeah. out yeah, and you know get a group of people together that get a similar idea. And I think people love that camaraderie. Maybe going back to like well, the that's sports bar. Of like, yeah. But it's like you kind of have the same beliefs mm-hmm. and experiences. Mm-hmm. But And then I want to ask you about charisma a little bit of a pastor too. And I think there's going to be a guy you're going to talk about. But uh, <laughs> Well, not necessarily, but if you want to, we can. Yeah, I think uh, charisma is big. But I think uh, like my question of being like, what do you think, do you think evangelicalism in America is like mm-hmm. where we're focusing. Do you think it like confuse people or messes things up or is it like, is it good or? Yeah. Uh, I, look. Tough to judge. No, I can judge it pretty well. All right, let's go. Uh, I'll be pretty critical. Let's of go. It. And uh, mean even. But, but I think there is a pause because I go, I, I really believe in being non-dualistic, which is like terminology that I've learned from uh, this Franciscan priest who's like Oprah and him are friends, mm-hmm. like Bono and him are friends. So like uh, Pete Holmes is a fan of his, right? Dang. So, you know, it's not about, you know, the just because he's a Franciscan priest, he's one of like the world's like top leading spiritual leaders, right? And so he talks a lot about non-dualism. And what that is, is like approaching things from things aren't black and white. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's this and it's this, yes. you know, it's like Hitler, one of the most evil men that's ever lived, and he also liked classical music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but so do all villains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All villains love painting and classical music. They're all sitting in their laboratories. Yeah, guy. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> World domination. Dude, exactly, bro. Yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, but I'll, I'll say this. Here's my experience with evangelical Christianity. Is that this would probably even be a good title for this episode? It's like waking up, learning what evangelical Christianity is. If you if that's the faith you inherited, right? It's it's re- and I'm not even fucking joking here. Like go, it's baby. really equivalent to waking up from the matrix. Really? Oh fuck! That's a great analogy. I love that. Look, my so uh, my background is I was uh, uh, my dad's side of the family is Jewish. Mm-hmm. And, like I have because I'm not a, not practicing, and, and it's even deeper than that because my mom's not Jewish. You know, they don't look at me as Jewish, right, right? right? There's that thing, which, by the way, my my aunt, who is uh, uh, who is Jewish, she <laughs> she's in her 70s and she's like, would you like to know where this came from? She's like New Jersey, yeah. Jew, right? Yeah. And she's like, would you like to know where this came from? I was like, yeah. She's like, there was a time back in Rome when that wasn't even there. And it's like, oh, okay. And she's like, she's like, uh, um, well, when did it start? It was like, well, basically the Jews just didn't stop fucking everybody. <laughs> and <laughs> they this. wanted it. And then everybody's like in, everybody's in. And they didn't want everybody to be in. So then they made up this role. No, it's got to come from the mother. Dude, dude. <laughs> now, I don't know if that's true. She's also the type of person once we were at like uh, uh, on vacation together. And she was like, um, you know, she was like, David, you got to lay off the carbs. 
which I do. <laughs> and she's like, because it's really hard for Jews to lose weight. <laughs> And I was like, why? Because, you know, all that time in Egypt and, you know, and when we left Egypt and it was because we needed that, we needed a lower metabolism. And I just, eventually I called her out on it and she's like basically my mom now. Yes. Uh, and I, I was like, okay, Aunt Bobby, this can't be true. And she goes, it has to be true. I Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> dude, this is the best, the aunt, dude. The inheritance, oh. dude. So my grandpa dies, uh, 2009. And basically, my experience with Christianity was like, like I got down with the positive, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, God's love? Yeah, 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 I'm in. But I always really wrestled with it because I was like also really hurt by the same group of people mm -hmm. who called themselves Christians, mm -hmm. right? And um, and the the and so the danger I think waking up to realizing what evangelical Christianity is is we. <laughs> And I think I think partially because they just didn't know themselves mm. is we were taught this is the whole of Christianity. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love my grandma to death. Who, on my mom's side, she raised me, but you know, I remember Christmases. She's like somebody gave me a book on Mother Teresa, and she in front of the family was like, "Well, too bad she's going to hell." No way. Yeah, and we all okay. didn't. You know, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. this fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, but I just, I just. But that's what. Yeah. It's like everybody is out except for this little segment of Christianity known as evangelical Christianity. Yeah, and it's interesting because like you mm. trying to define it is difficult, but like don't they want to because I was looking up these definitions and it's tough to define, but it's like, oh, there's like maybe four people. Dude, I'll blow your fucking head off with this shit. They're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. they it, the point is to like recruit like get people to be safe. Right? Well here well, here's the whole thing. And I and I have a joke out. about this in some of my stand up. Um, you know, but, but here's the whole thing is that they believe that you literally have to be not, not all right. Mm -hmm. uh, but they believe that you have to be a Christian it, before you die. Mm -hmm. The majority of evangelical Christians before you die or you're going to hell for all eternity. And then that intense, very intense. And so when my grandpa died, died, a great loving Jewish man, mm -hmm. I, I, it's hard to explain to people because when they, you know, when when they go, well, why didn't you kind of get out earlier? Yeah. Right. And it's it's hard to explain. But like if this is why I call it the matrix. Right. Because if you're just taught that reality is this way, mm -hmm. it, it, you, one of the things that Richard Rohr taught me was that that if you if you're taught anything before seven. Right. They say where it goes in your brain. It's like God herself. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Right? right. God herself implanted it right and so you go uh, it's it's the it's grass is green uh the the sky is blue and gay people go to hell yeah right and you don't uh which is obviously atrocious yeah. and horrible and yeah. not of god exactly not but true. you but th w what a lot of them are trying to do is make sense of a, a lot of their scriptures that don't make sense dude exactly yeah they're kind of like yeah. Dude, they're writing a th their own thesis statement with it and, mm -hmm. and minting the words. And it's like, but I believe that seventh thing. I grew up in Orange County, dude. I woke up from the matrix of like, wait, not everyone goes out to brunch? <laughs> wait, what, dude? Like, what? Uh, like, yeah. not all 13 year olds yeah, yeah. have mimosa? Dude, yeah, yeah dude. Not, yeah, not all 14 year olds have a handicap? Like, what's yeah. going on? Like, and, and on the golf course is what I mean. <laughs> like, uh, dude, it's like, yeah, bro, it takes a I have a this lot old man to... laugh. I apologize. <laughs> no, no, never apologize. Dude, I appreciate you sharing your dank knowledge on here, dude. Well, so the 1800s, here's what's special about the 1800s, right? Yeah. There's something crucial happened. So, so before the 1800s, Christianity was like, uh, I, I, I mean, you, to really understand it, you need to know some of the peak dates before the, the 1800s. But okay, so let's work backwards, right? But, but here's... Well, you can have me on another time to talk about that. I know, because we're cause exactly what I was going to say, because we're also pinched on time. But it's like, okay, I mean, I'm even thinking of like the the Great Awakening or like. The, right. Um, so so here's here's the thing. Like if you there's the, the, let's say there's like a four dates mm -hmm. right in, in the history of just Christianity. Mm -hmm. Right. That things got fucked up. Right. Like and, and when a, when a grenade goes off. Right. Like some of that needed to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Like because it, it it led to some good you know or, or like like let's say the reformation like there were some things that needed reform totally yeah you know um did a whole new thing need to be started no 
Yeah. <laughs> and did it right? lead to And did it lead to, oh, they ended up becoming like, in some ways, and I think in a lot of ways, like, like especially on like an internal sense of like uh, uh, judgment, condemnation, all that, all the fucked up shit, led to to worse atrocities. Yeah, right. Totally. Like, um, led to um, you know us going like slavery is okay in America. Crazy. I mean, like, so you go, you go to the 1500s with the the Reformation. You get the Puritans mm-hmm. who were so fucking. Yeah, Robin Williams Scott had a great Ryder. joke about them, which was like, we're so judgmental and legalistic and so uptight that fucking England kicked them out. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so, and and they are the predecessors of of where these fucking wackos go. Like we're a Christian nation, right? Totally. And they're the predecessors of Calvinism, of reform theology, mm-hmm. which is like the I would say now this is just my opinion, but the ugliest, grossest. Like so, there's forty thousand denominations and pro- and just Protestant Christianity. That, so sex of Protestant. Yes, forty thousand. Dang. Dang. So dude. when somebody says I, uh, you're a Christian, right? So there's there's the three majors, right? Which is Roman Catholicism, where you're from, mm-hmm. um, Eastern Orthodoxy, mm-hmm. um, and uh, which has some of the elements that that I actually enjoy the most, and Roman Catholic. Like some of my heroes of the faith come from there, like mm-hmm. uh, Julian of Norwich, Saint Francis of Assisi, Claire of Assisi. Um, but Protestantism, I mean, there, yes, there's some beautiful things here and there but uh but what it branched into evangelical christianity so the the only time we have to talk about today is the bomb that happened in the 1800s yeah was a response in, in roman catholicism you guys had a response to it as well yeah and and we had a response to it, to it well and what we were responding to the the grenade that happened is the enlightenment period yes like okay. like individualism and everything yes so scientific method yes. thought rationalism all these things that were necessary for the evolution of consciousness for us the the, the you know this uh scientific awakening totally. that, that, better that health care better right maybe industry and everything so you have to understand, like, really it was about power, mm. right? So the religious culture before then, before the, you know, Enlightenment period, it, it was like they were, like, looked at as the, the really the, the, the keepers of knowledge, mm-hmm. right? Yes. See why it's really about power? So, so they're the keepers of knowledge. Then the Enlightenment period comes on and it's like, no, we can actually figure this shit out. Yeah, people are learning to read <laughs> right. for themselves. Yeah. yeah. So we can actually figure this shit out. And what happened is... Roman Catholicism and uh, Protestantism fucking freaked out, right? And it was about authority, mm-hmm. right? And so what they did is 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 they said we need to we need to establish our power. And here's what they did that hadn't been done before. Is I'll st- I'll start with your team. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that <laughs> Roman Catholicism? Hey, 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 just, like you said, I inherited. I inherited right, you inherited it. Inherited, you inherited it. So so what they did at that time is they said they established a new thing, which was the Pope is infallible. Right. Right. So, so that, that was established during the Enlightenment period as a response wow, to I the Enlightenment that. period. Wow. It wasn't pre. Dang. So pre. So so. It, so there I, was I, papal fallacy I, before that. Oh yeah. Because a human being. It, it was based on four things. Right. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the one section of, of Christianity that, that I have some uh, mild respect for. See, I'm kind of a prick to everybody. But baby, you're getting after it. Let's I'm go getting provo- after it. Provocative. So, yeah. sick. We're sick. We're twisted. It, it is, 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 okay, so religion, right? The spirit in the material world, yeah. right? Is, is they, what they were trying to do is like, it's so fucking obnoxious and narcissistic to go, let me tell you what God thinks. Right. Here's, here's who's in, here's who's out, here's what God feels about you, here's what... It's all fucking obnoxious bullshit. Uh, but... That's how you get these charismatic like cult leaders and stuff. Oh. We won't go down that road right now. But yeah, yeah, but we can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so there, was, there, there was four ways, which the four ways was really reasonable, mm-hmm. right? It was based on tradition, mm-hmm. right, which is pretty much your your denomination right. your section of christianity got that really right and i think there were some beautiful things apart of, of course anything good can be used for bad of course right um then you have uh the scriptures mm-hmm. right so your religion scriptures whatever uh, which varies as we know like from what excluded in the gospel and not or gnostics or right right apocrypha mm-hmm. apocryphal scriptures and then you had um you know so tradition scripture 
Um, oh, then you had uh, uh, reason. <laughs> Before the Enlightenment period, there was a level of reason, right? So tradition, scripture, reason, oh, and your experience. Okay. Right? To, because it's basically this quad, like in, in Methodism, it's called this like the quadrilateral approach. I, I don't know the exact phrase, but the quadrilateral is something. It was basically like, kind of like, think of it like longitude and lat latitude, mm -hmm. right? It's like, what's God feel or think or saying about this? And they would go, okay, well, we got tradition, right? We have the, what the scriptures say. So the point that I'm trying to get at is it wasn't this, just the scriptures. Yeah. Right now, that's how we responded. The, not we, because I'm not in that club anymore. Mm -hmm. But that's how the uh, uh, Protestants responded to the Enlightenment period. Was going the scriptures are infallible. Right. Well, here's what's fucked up about that. I'll give you an example of what I'm saying. So when you run into somebody and they're like, "Well, the Bible says this," I go, "No, it doesn't." Mm -hmm. they, they could be reading it in plain English. Engl English. Yeah. <laughs> English, right? Like the yeah. Bible says this. Here's your, here's what you say to them. No, it doesn't. I was like. That's, that's your interpretation exactly of what it's saying. Uh, uh, it wasn't written in English. <laughs> it wasn't written in, you know what I mean? Um, and so, but here's the problem. Like, everybody became a deputy. Yes, dude. Right? And so the moment that happened, so you already have the Protestant Reformation. Once you have that, like, in response to the Enlightenment period, it's like anybody who picks up the scriptures, right, or the, in the Christian tradition, the Bible, right, they become like uh, Wyatt Earp. Yeah, and they're automatically an expert, dude. Yeah. Automatically. Bro, I've read of Mice and Men for every book report I ever did. Couldn't tell you the themes. Couldn't tell you the characters. Yeah. Get, like, then you're telling me the Bible, this old yeah. book that's been like mm -hmm. rewritten in different languages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From the new, the Old Testament, we really yeah. like, there's like theories of the authors yeah. and stuff. Like, yeah. It's just, yeah, man. It's, so, it's, you know, like back, back to, you know, back to the 1500s, it's, um, you, you, if I if I walk up to anybody and I go like, "What's your problem with like Christianity in America?" They're gonna they're gonna tell you a couple of things, right? They're gonna tell you, um, you know, the big one is hell, mm -hmm. right? The the big one is like a violent picture of God. Well, let's just talk talk about the violent picture of God. You know, when they go when they go, how can you how could you you know follow and worship a God who like committed mass genocide? I go, I don't. Mm -hmm. They're like, but the Bible says that. And I'm like, yeah, it was literature, right? And the fucking problem, right, with, and the, here's the bad side of the Reformation. Mm -hmm. So it's not an accident that the, the, the Reformation happens, literally like Martin Luther nailing the 95 Theses, yeah. happened in the same, I think, decade that the printing press was invented. Dang, dude. Right? And so what you have happen at that, the, at that crucial time in history is is you have all, uh you basically have somebody that's where we start to lose lose the idea of how information used to be communicated mm -hmm. so so at in the 1500s that's where the it's it's like if this was like a, a tree right and we're looking at the the um the the vines or the branches or the roots whatever you want to call it this is where a crucial time in history happened like a break in the matrix if you will love that where Let's go. where where christianity not that it wasn't always fucked up in some ways mm -hmm. right uh, at least from its original intent totally from and jesus it's to run here. by men you know we are flawed creatures is is you get like this is where we started looking at the bible literally yes yeah, right yeah. so it was like everything from genesis to like every religion had a, a, a Noah's Ark type story, right? Or a parting the Red Sea story or, or whatever, right? And I'm not an expert on exegesis or anything like that. But what I will tell you, like I asked, I asked Richard Rohr, why do so many Christians interpret the Bible literally? And he said, because they never took a literature class. Yeah, dude, <laughs> totally, yeah, exactly, bro. You dude. know what I'm saying? And so, fuck, it just fucked it. So that way anybody... You know, I was once talking to a pastor, and I went up to him, and I said, hey, man, I, can I talk to you about something? You need to fucking stop it. Yeah. And he goes, what are you talking about? I was like, you're telling people that homosexuality is a sin. Yeah, it's whack. And I was like, I was like, why the fuck are you doing that? Mm -hmm. I was like, because it, it says in the Bible. I was like, okay, let me put it to you this way. Like, have you studied? <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, have you, can you go back and know Hebrew enough and Aramaic enough and know the context of not, have you done that homework? Dude, yes. Right? Exactly. And he's like, well, no, I, I never have. I was like, so my problem isn't with 
that your religion or your denomination, if you will, is saying that. I mean, I trust me, I have fucking problems with that. It's wrong. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's evil. I would even say. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, but my fucking problem right now is with you. Yeah. And he's like, why are you saying that? And I was like, if I'm going to go up to a group of people and speak on behalf of God. Yes. Right. And, and go, what you're doing is wrong. I better fucking do my homework. Exactly, bro. So you're not even doing your fucking homework, right? And what? Like, there's like two pieces of scripture, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I'll give you an example. What up, dude? Once again, this episode is brought to you by Haver Supply Co., dude. I am fired up on these lids, dude. Sick as hats, dude. I sleep in this hat, dude. I mean, dude, we all imagine ourselves doing epic things, dude, like putting on a dank PowerPoint presentation in the friggin' boardroom for the boss and then throwing a shock of what up and stepping out, dude. Imagine having that feeling every time you put on a lid, dude. That's what Haver Supply does, dude. Keeps you looking good and feeling epic all the time, dude, at the beach, dude. On a hike with my dank fiance, playing golf with the boys, and you better believe when I'm posting up enjoying a dank IPA, dude. Dude, I wear this lid researching on, for my freaking podcast inside at my desk, dude. I flip it backwards, I get in the zone, dude. It's indoor, it's outdoor. Haver Supply, it's inspired by outdoor living, dude. It's the surfer, wanderer, adventure traveler in all of us, dude. You put this on, dude, it's gonna protect you from that sun and keep you looking fresh and feeling freaking epic, dude. They come out in small batch release hats, dude, so they, they fit your dome in style, dude. And, and by small batch, it means you gotta get them quick, dude, because they're coming out with dank ones. I go the OG patch, I keep it in my car, it's my go-to. Wear it on the run, dude, when I'm cruising around with my dank GF, my dank pupper, just solo, dude. And with the boys, you better believe that, dude. So. Fired up on Haver Supply, dude. Get yours, dude. I'm telling you, I fell asleep on the airplane with mine, dude. Used it to cover my lid, my eyes, dude. Excuse me, lowered my lid to cover my eyes, dude. Woke up, dude. Boom, two bags of peanuts, dude. Stewardess respected the lid, dude. So for listeners, you can get 20% off your order with code DANK at checkout. Go to haversupply.com and enter code DANK at checkout for 20% off. That's haversupply.com, code DANK for 20% off at checkout. <laughs> Treat yourself, dude. Yeah. If you if you ask me why are things changing right now, it's the evolution of the internet. Yeah, because it used to be. Think about thirty years ago. It's like here's here's what it is. It's like well, okay, that's what it is. Now anyone can Google and find out shit. Mm -hmm. So there's like one scripture, maybe two in the New Testament where it talks about homosexuality. Yeah. Okay. We'll just do some googling. That word was never in scripture. Mm -hmm. Right. That was put in there in the 1960s, I think, by like s some interpreter in, at Harvard and because they were working on the translate. Oh, the NIV translation. That's mm -hmm. what it was. And it was such a fucking uproar that the students and some of the staff were like basically like had a protest or something like that on campus. And we're like, you can't do this. We're like, do you know what this is going to do to the future of this country alone yeah, dude. by by putting out some scripture that literally degrades a whole group of people? So when That's people crazy. go like homosexuality is a sin, I was like, no, that was one fucking guy that interpreted it. Exactly. And, see, and see, here's why that's so important. Here's why it's so fucking important. So if you'd actually do your homework about that, it wasn't talking about homosexuals, homosexuality. You know what it was? Hmm. Do you know this? No. What it was talking about was boy sex slaves in Rome. So so that term, what they were talking about, were like literally like pedophilia. Mm. It wasn't talking about homosexuality. And so you go from pedophilia to homosexuality. And, and I guarantee you, if you did a poll, fuck it. If you got every fucking Christian that says homosexuality is a sin in this country, got them all together, I bet you none of them know that. I love that you're bringing it up today, and I think that's a great example of just, basically it just seems like people can, and it's it's an age-old story of just being able to interpret for control. Like, why say homosexual? Why, who does that benefit? Well, it benefits yeah. like that pastor because he's, he's preaching a nuclear family, and like there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's also nothing wrong with homosexuality, but it's like yeah. the fact that he wants that the power or the church or the main yeah. organization. Yeah. And it's crazy, dude. Um, but I like that you're bringing it up here real quick before you go. Aaron, and also... Uh, what up, Aaron? I forgot to say what up to you, dude. What up? Dude, just chilling, dude. Um, f first of all, uh, how are we looking on time? I know we're tight, dude. Uh, we got 15. Oh, let's go, Yay. dude. 15 more minutes. Ding, ding, ding. Bonus, dude. My prayer came true, dude. 15 more minutes with my bro, David, Oh, dude. my God. Um, first of all, it's like, um, I wanted to ask you about, um, in, 
more modern um, guy, uh, Billy Graham. Oh, yeah. What's Billy, What's your take on Billy Graham? Who is he? I just saw his name popping up in a lot of articles that I was reading. Oh, man. Um, well, I'm not a Billy I, expert. I, I did meet his grandson once. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and from what I hear about Billy is like he was just a... He, he was one of the few guys... I mean, look, he had his issues. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like I think like he made some anti-Semitic marks. And if anti-Semitic shit ever comes up, I'd always like... Mm, yeah, look out. You're talking about my family, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I always have a little radar for yeah, well, that. Of so, you know, but again, you know, trying to be non-dualistic, it's like I think those moments came up when he was like with Nixon. Mm. Right. And, in, 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 you know... <laughs> It's like some, it, yeah, he fumbled in that moment, mm -hmm. you know, but he was with the president and it's the power and that's seductive and it's like Nixon was probably a piece of shit, mm -hmm. you know, saying some mm -hmm. fucked up things, which of course we already know historically he, yes, he did. Yes. And uh, he probably just fucking, I mean, I don't know all the details, but other than, like those things, like he really believed it and was like a good guy, right? Like yeah. he, 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 he. And I have struggled with, um, like the, 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 his grandchild who I, I know and, uh, have become loose friends with, he's like, yeah, there's nothing much to tell about my grandpa. Like, and this was before he died. He was like, yeah, he likes orange juice. <laughs> like Amazing, he doesn't drink cause he thinks it's wrong. He's like, I just don't, I just like orange juice. Like he was just like a boring kind of yeah. like good grandpa guy. Right. And I've kind of really wrestled with, um, you know, like, oh, what do you do with these people that like, like, even with the fucked up stories in the Bible and some of their fucked up theologies and doctrines kind of still found their way to like loving all people. I think that's like, you know, yeah, dude. I mean, and people can have knocks on religion of like hypocrisy. There's hypocrisy that exists mm -hmm. for sure. Um, question two. You could even say mostly. Yeah, <laughs> dude. And it's as yeah. long as someone believes that it's nice. I mean, I'm not as long because that you know. I bet you that other bad pastors do believe that homosexuality is bad. I bet, I bet you they staunchly believe that. But that's not. Oh, a I guarantee you. If there's any Christians that heard me say that, they now think I'm going to hell. Really? And I have a surprise for you. Well, dude, let's cruise. There is bro. no hell. Yeah, dude. <laughs> me and you together, dude. Yeah. Um, so hell's another word that was never in the Bible. Another big pastor, and I ask you this because when I look in the mirror, how can I not think of him? Joel Osteen. What's, uh, what's your yeah. take, dude? What's your what What's your take? I mean, everyone uh, says okay. prosperity yeah. gospel. Yeah. Or... So I uh, I'm learning to become non-dualistic about it, mm -hmm. and here's why I uh, um, look. I, I don't know of any scandals. I'm the, 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 the only uh, kind of thing that grossed me out once is I knew somebody once that was like, you know, l just like an alcoholic, an addict, and like for some reason, like I'm going to bash on him, but give me a second. Yeah. And so um, like, you know, when I heard that, it was like, yeah, he listened to his like, uh, like cheery, cheesy bullshit, you know, Christian messages. And for some reason, it kind of was helping him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I mean, uh, I really don't care about the source as much as I care that you kind of get off drugs and and clean up your life. And or, not just in that moralistic type of way, but like for the health of your heart, yeah. your soul. Right. And so I was like, great. And then they like went to the church and it was like um, there was a family who was like parked in the the the, the, the fact that the, they had a parking lot where it was like the important people of the church could park. That's a sign right there, dude. That yeah, was a bro. big like a red higher. flag. Yeah, and he was like, he's like, that grossed me out. And then Rick's so good at praying. Rick <laughs> is so legit. Yeah. Yeah. For like he the really pastors. brings the energy, and, dude. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, and then, uh, and then there was a family that broke down, like they couldn't get their, their car going. Mm. And this guy went over to help them. But, you know, he didn't grow up in any, t any type of Christian or religious or church cultures. And so, like, he was like, oh, let me go ask this church for help. It's a church, right? For sure. So he goes and knocks on the door. And he said that they were more concerned with, like, them getting out of the A-list parking than oh, they dude. were, like, helping out this family of five that was also, like, there for Christian help or whatever you want to call it. That's some right? Hollywood stuff, dude, where it's like top of call sheet. Yeah. You know, he's going to be here in 10 minutes. We got to get this And, and whatever. Here. If you're like, uh, you know, uh, at 
Paramount or something, that's fine. You know, but it's like business, yes. It's a business, right? But when you go, Oh, this is supposed to be about helping people. Exactly. And yeah. loving people. And it's like, ah, sorry, our service is starting and you're in Osteen's parking dude, business. That's gnarly, dude. Okay. I mean that says it all right. Yeah, it says it all, bit, right? Bit, now I, I, I also have you should get a valet, a bro. Problem. You get me out there, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now here's my biggest vengeance against them. I'll tell you my biggest problem with them and kind of like what's what softened it a tad bit mm -hmm. is there's a thing called prosperity gospel, yeah. which is atrocious. Uh, and I forgive me if you believe that. What is it quickly? So, in case so the pro know. yeah. So the prosperity gospel is this idea that um, it's also called uh, uh, the health, wealth, the health and wealth gospel, mm -hmm. which is like if you love God and and then you're never then you could get rich. You're always going to be healthy and you're whatever. And it's yeah. just bullshit because you go, you go, oh well, I got cancer. God must hate me. Exactly. Dude. There's plenty <laughs> of people that love God that yeah. aren't. And, uh, and and it really, you know, and and I I also hate a lot of other like I, I kind of I, in general I tend to despise just blatant optimism because it doesn't make any room for like people that are in pain. Yeah, and you got to sometimes embrace the pain and work through that. If you deny it, you're never going to. Well, get... that's health, yeah. right? That's healing, right? Healing involves like both, you know, beauty involves like the mess of life and the getting back on the horse. Totally. Right? Like, it's it's redemption. That's what redemption is, is like, hey, yeah, my parents abused me. Yeah, I mean, my own story. I've struggled with depression and suicidal tendencies and mental health and all that. I was abused in my childhood. And, um, you know, it didn't kill me. Mm -hmm. So that's redemption, right? Like, where you go, like, like and that's where joy is. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not happy because um, that shit happened. But I'm happy and I can find my joy in that, like, it happened and I'm still moving forward. Yeah. Right? Like, I've got kids of my own now. I've got whatever. It's like, it didn't kill me. I'm, you know. Um, and so I've been really kind of, in general, and I still am. I'm, I'm, I'm against, but I'm now way more against <laughs> more than just prosperity gospel. All right. And that's yeah. the dude that I want to hang out with. As long as you're not hurting anybody. <laughs> exactly right. But if, you, if you have a religious system that believes in hurting anybody, yeah, well, fuck you. Yeah, dude, yeah, exactly. What's going on there, yeah. dude? Well, yeah. dude, thank you, dude. Dude, thank You're you. You're a freaking beast, bro. David, legend, dude. Aaron, always a legend on the sticks. Thank you, dude. Questions, comments, suggestions, Treasure at gmail.com. David Leo Schultz, beast, dude. Thank you for being here, bro. Love you. Likewise, brother.